This is a demonstration of a small house we have, small plot, that you can. We run in two compost, we don't have the space for the biogas, but you can seriously reduce the waste by engaging in recycling. Of course, recycle streams are going out. The rest of the organic can be really managed by composting, and that has been the case with, uh, for a long, long time. So every one of us can contribute, because sometimes we don't hesitate to buy a car, but we ask the composting bin to be donated. I have seen the letters coming to Central Environment Authority. Please, we are 10 houses down this road. We, can, we get a, can, we deliver, uh, can you donate 10? As if our waste, since CE has to be responsible to manage it, and so they have to give you the composting. No way, right? So it's very important for us to think those investments are necessary, and those investments are very positive, and they are not mega investments, right? So we need to think along those lines. A composting bin in everyone's house, if you can afford it. And now we are pushing it even for the high rises. So we need to get into the habits of separation. And so it should start young. And this is important. And one thing I put in is electronic waste. You can see very quickly that sometimes the waste that we have been spending outside, you can see significant amount of gold and palladium and stuff recovered, and London Bullion Exchange has even been sold, but have been used in there to sell. Um, so there's real value. If you properly segregate and recycle, and if you internalize the recycle to here, it's like in Japan, where you recover. You don't have the same I mean, like, uh, metals as we, I mean, pretty much similar in Japan and Sri Lanka for that, right? And they do really recover, and I'll give an example of China. So if you look at this um, young lady, well, she became the, the first woman billionaire in China, right, Ms. Yang. And um, what she did, she herself and her husband did, was very simple. They went scavenging the United States landfills. And of course, they exploited what we call the reverse supply chain. The ships that were coming from China with electronic goods and other things like that were empty on their way back. So they at one point became the biggest exporter from US to China. So it's all cardboard. And she was the first woman billionaire at 49 years. And now today she runs the world's, one of the largest paper factories, cardboard factories, Nine Dragon. So there's wealth in waste properly done. I know we have few stories but they are not being really told because they don't have the tax files, maybe, right? So, uh, but, but I think the, some stories are there in Sri Lanka, too. However, this is an inspiration, in a way, and, how, uh, and also it was powering the Chinese economic boom. And it is said if the United States actually followed the circular economy concept, China will not be the economy that it is today. So it's a very interesting thing to think if U.S. looked at recycling economy at a very early stage and even up to 90, I mean that, there won't be the material that China uses. So it's interesting, right? Anyway, so this is an example. Christmas is over in U.S. The wires are in China. Of course, in Sri Lanka, we store it for the next year, right? But not in U.S. So there is a whole scale export of this material, the plastics, the wires, the cop, everything, and then there's a mass produce and raw materials are taken. And you don't have to do primary mining, so your process is very different. You actually start from a better position when you start re reutilizing this material. And interestingly, London was like this, right? So something, again, Colombo has to think. Because if you look at this, we know some of the, um, I mean, these things may not have been very common, but if you look at mudlarks, the toshers, the pure finders, the born ficker, the sewer hunters, the night soil men, etc., etc., in London, this is Charles Dickens' time, right? What their tasks were very simple and very clear cut. You are supposed to scavenge resources, and they were scavenging resources. So, what the, I mean, for example, what pure finders were finding is actually the dog shit. They were collecting dog shit, right? Why? For the tanning industry. So their duty, you start in the morning, start collecting these things, and probably very good democracy, I mean, they started, 
they never Im are collected others waste so like if you take toshes you are collecting from the coins from the corpses right so dead bodies so interesting times but the concept of reuse of resources the value of res um, the waste was embedded only thing today we don't go into this level but we must understand there is this value and that value can be utilized so we need proper waste management and the proper professional approach to the recovery so this is what we showed as well so prior to that at university of moratua we actually had the front end of separation and we had the paper going to the deaf and blind school for the good quality paper for braille purposes the secondary ones for the environmental services like abans and paper collection the glass bottles went into the glass factory sometimes of course the type of glass bottles that we observed were not made didn't make us very happy but um, nevertheless glass went to glass factory then the yogurt cups and stuff like that went into the plastic recycle and interestingly plastic recycle actually set up his shop next door to this uh, place uh, in the adjacent road uh, to the university because he was finding quite an amount of material coming his way and uh, it was helpful to him so up front you take away those things the organic you use it for the biogas and then technically more to a could have been a zero waste point almost right and that can happen in the country if you just scale it up one by one one family individuals institutions that was happening now if you take procter and gamble the unilevers in us they are declaring themselves to be zero waste the uh, companies from their factories zero waste to landfills right because then the rest of is getting used up for something productive and so that's the concept of zero waste so we can declare our houses zero waste if you do things like this so you need material mrf material recovery facility if you don't do it the cost to the government in a process like this is expensive and all three processes coming up and kardanya and muturaja vela will carry some of this pre processing operations for recovery and they are quite complex and there is an opportunity for us to make use of certain geograph uh, certain situations to make small landfills we need small landfills because you can say perfectly recyclable but there are certain things that are mixed and are not really recyclable and we need to have a disposal mechanism and the best point is for have a landfill right So, but we don't need mega landfills. But you can have clustered for Pradeshya Sabhas, etc. You can have some mini landfills. So, I'm taking an example of a quarry site, which can be developed as a landfill facility. Uh, now, this is from Kadwela, right? So, you have these options available. Attitude is very important to change, right? We do have the habit of disposal, and um, it's important we change ourselves. And it's a very interesting that examples like this: a small child. age 9 right my lacrosse uh, name from us did a transformational thing he one day observed the plastic straw and then said let's get rid of this this is not useful remember we have this mini packets and things like that on almost boutiques that we see because we have got trying to capture the bottom end of the pyramid or the the lower part of the pyramid um, getting the, getting part of their share of their wallet into the equation so we have this But, uh, the body packs so body packs proliferate and there's all lots, lots of solid waste that comes from that it's like the 30 million bags and uh, the sheets and so on so just this example is very sad to watch but i want to demonstrate it because sri lanka was ranked in the sixth place for marine pollution i think we have disputed that okay i'm coming you can go for it mr surgeon I am conscious. I am looking at the wildlife and nature protection society. And but you must see the. Going to be so happy. Big boy. Oh, careful. Bless you. Have you ever heard a turtle sneeze? I have. I know it's not the best thing to watch, Aww. but. You know what this is? What is it? Brain. That's a worm. Oh, that is disgusting. And I think my stupid camera battery is going to die soon. Mm. Oh my God! 
you don't care for the more iron. Like oh god, turtle pee. Holy crap. What the fuck? Sorry for the landing. Jesus fucking Christ, that is freaking amazing and gross at the same time. Oh fuck. Now she's bleeding. But is it a hookworm? I think it's a tube worm. I'm sorry, little one. I think you like it better afterwards, though. Um, how do you know? Can we actually... I don't want to pull it too hard. I don't know what's attached no, to it. No, no, I no, I understand that. Cutting it, yeah, maybe. Because yeah, I mean it's bleeding already. Maybe it's in is it her brain already? Who knows? This is a gusano. See, but I'm gonna see how it is. Is it alive though? That's a straw. Right? So, our irresponsible disposal. And uh, one of the early pictures probably was a turtle that had the May West now reside in a zoo. But this is an example. I mean, this child of nine years' age, and so on, I always have this campaign on banned plastic straws. Because it's, it, you use it once, throw it, and I mean, you cannot collect kilograms to get your recyclable value. And I think there's a Sri Lankan startup actually producing something different uh, from Mathera uh, on this. So just our, I mean, similar things are happening. I mean, this would have been very shocking. And it was noted at some point, and this is why the story. But the point is, my idea was, again, to see that some of our small, maybe irresponsible actions can have very big impacts to somebody somewhere. And this is an example. Right, and that is why I said the well, lunch lunch sheet. Just imagine the dengue that is going through. If somebody is going through that process, right? Because we may now say no, lunch sheet cannot be avoided. It's needed, but we must think if that is difficult to recycle, if that is difficult to collect, and it has become so much of a problem. We don't know the quantification of that problem, the magnitude. But if we can do something different, we should try to do that different. I mean, in, engage in and make doing engage in that ensuring that difference happen. And this is an example, a very probably a dramatic one. So, and it's an example. This is why I said greenwashing. We cannot have this. An example of, we have the nicely placed in a tourist place uh, of colored bins. But you can see the person comes with one bag and empty the whole thing to one bag. And uh, that's the end of the day. Now, what are you trying to achieve with this segregation? nice colored beans and the separated. You're achieving nothing. You're cheating yourself and you're cheating everybody else. So they need to be conscious of some of these things. You should do it with a purpose. If you're not in prepared to do that, don't do that. Don't have this intermediate person and then um, have this type of story, right? So we, there has to be the need for the sincerity on this, the purpose. And for this solid waste, we need it. So. I will look at this very uh, quickly to complete. It's also interesting innovation. I must stress innovation, right? This polystyrene stuff, which are getting banned, but it's very interesting from, again, some young kids from US. Um, considering that Sri Lanka is an activated carbon leader in the world, now they turn this polystyrene into activated carbon and water filters and it's likely to be patented, right? So you can see this, it's a Scientific American Innovator Award. And um, so uh, it's very interesting how a young mind, I think we should also propel in this thing. That's why in solid waste management, the family is very important. Sometimes um, some may, the parents may be too old to change, but the change can be brought in through the child. 
right? So getting the message across and then you transform. So we need to attend to this and also always think of opportunities. And so it kind of final, uh, the something that is again going to be banned, but people have identified that you can degrade polythene, right? I don't know how many of you have seen this, but it's uh, recently from University of Cambridge. Um, this is an article, one of the research papers in cell biology, uh, current biology. But this came from a caterpillar from who has been type of caterpillar who has been using a bee's uh, this wax, and then the same degradation process, I mean digestion process, is enabling him to that caterpillar to degrade back because one beekeeper put this caterpillar into a bag, polythene bag, and then in the over, uh, the next day morning, the caterpillar has gone, and the there were holes in the bag. Now that's very interesting. So of course the scientist next step is not to grow caterpillars but to identify the enzyme or the particular thing and do mass scale that particular one and then looking at, then we may have something degradable opportunity coming through because the nature has again spun a surprise on us, right? So this is recent. So you can see the hole and it can be, the caterpillar can do that in about a couple of hours. So that's fast kinetics, right? And uh, then that correct knowledge in the hands of the man, probably one can go much further. So we need to look at Colombo as a zero waste city. There's a need for people to participate and contribute at least 10 minutes per day. And a fantastic message can be sent out of an urban city in modern times and with a circular economy principle in place. So we need to look at improving these rates, I won't go in, and we should look at livable city rating, uh, our position and all that. It's not there any, anywhere in here right now. Uh, but that can be changed. And also there are much, a lot of learning that one can take from standards like this. So ISO 37120 is all about indicators for city service and quality of life. So uh, we ignore knowledge most of the time, at our peril actually. Uh, we really, really uh, get some of these knowledge in, internalize them and move in the right direction. And there's a chance for a carbon neutral city if you work hard in this direction. But every one of us has to participate. Thank you very much.